Hello everyone and welcome back to Banjo Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. I am one well sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we are about to finish off the rest of Click Lock Wood. Back to you Tom. <laughs> so now ladies and gentlemen we're entering the autumn season of Click Lock Wood where as you can tell everything is covered in leaves and uh Unfortunately, Eerie doesn't want us to leave him alone. He wants us to collect more caterpillars in order to rescue his stomach and make him a big, massive, ultra awesome eagle. So there's that. So yeah, just keep an eye out on all these piles of leaves because you can go up them and each of these piles of leaves will usually have one, one or two goodies like that one will have a caterpillar on top of it, for example, that we'll need to collect and use, you know, folks? So just keep an eye out. It's really not that big a deal anyway to start things off we're gonna to want to go back into this lake because if you remember naughty we helped him out in the previous part and he has access to his house now now because of the lakes being filled up again with water 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 because you're water we can now access his house by swimming up here so what's up naughty how's things shaking ah You've given me a jiggy. Why, thank you, good sir. So he's been waiting months, apparently, to give us this, so... Oops. We got sidetracked. What can I say? <laughs> and there's also two notes up here, which are very easy to miss if you don't pay attention. Just So just keep an eye on the shelves, you know? Like I said, the biggest thing you're gonna need to make sure you do when you're playing this game is to look in each of the nooks and crannies. If you fail to look in the nooks and crannies, then you'll fail to find items. And failing to find items in this game is bad because this is a game around finding stuff. If you can't find shit, you're playing it wrong. <laughs> uh, I love how I say that, but I, I went into a massive tangent in the last part about people telling people that they can play in games they're, they're playing games wrong yeah but I digress anyway for this particular season we're gonna be need to use a lot of golden feathers because as you can see the clappy trap thingy has a lot of notes above it so we do need to actually um, use our invulnerability state in order to get those notes but time to lay Gobi the final blow and after this Gobi's basically gonna treat this as the last straw so boom there he goes Look at that, it's so beautiful. Now, Gobi by here is going to actually state that he's going off to the lava world, and that was actually, there was originally going to be a lava world in this game, and I believe it was also meant to be an ice level as well. It was meant to be a double level. Now, that stage, as many of you may know, actually got moved to the second game, so Gobi does actually still go to that level, it's just not in this game. Gobi's going to be there in the second game, and, uh, well, we're gonna see him when we go when we get to that, you know, folks. We're gonna see them next time, next in the next game, which will probably be in another year or two. Because I, like I said, I, I do these way in advance, ladies and gentlemen. And according to my list of games to record, the Banjo Two is way off. But I digress. Anyway, moving on up by here, it's time to collect the rest of the MacGuffins that are in the area. And as you can tell as well, in autumn, these birds that are inside all of the walls, they've increased in size. What does this mean? Absolutely nothing. This actually makes them easier to um, easier to hit, in my opinion. So, yeah, just be careful anyway, because they, they can they can easily clip you. What can I say? And also, as I said, using one wing requirement in this level, we do need to use it to jump on the clappy things in order to get the notes the clappy things are holding. Why are the clappy things holding notes? Because Gruntilda hates us, and she decided mm, I'm going to put these notes here. Seriously, who is putting all these notes in this world, by the way? Is, is it Gruntilda doing them, or...? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's ever said who puts all these notes in these worlds, and what the meaning of the notes are. I don't think Gruntilda will put them there, but then again, Gruntilda there earlier on said she'll make the game harder because we got one Jiggy. So, maybe she maybe she's a game designer throughout all this, and she's just giving us a fair chance. Maybe. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Anyway, what am I doing? There we go. <laughs> I don't know what I was planning then. 
Time to head on into Mumble's hut for the umpteenth time, and inside the hut this time is a caterpillar, so be sure to pick this up before leaving. And Mumble's too busy sweeping up his rug to give us a hand with magic, so unfortunately... Well, unfortunately we can't use Mumbo's magical powers, but we do need to come in here, new, uh, come in here anyway because otherwise we will not be able to pick up the notes, and otherwise we will not have a musical time. Oh god. I still find this- actually no, uh, something I'll talk about in the future because I never know what the future might bring, but uh... Yeah, I do like this level as well, especially with all the leaves and stuff popping up, popping down from the sky. And I think this is one of the levels that run the most, runs the most smoothly as well on the N64. Like, I think this pretty much runs at 60 FPS without pretty much any real drops in frame rate. Well, any real noticeable drops in frame rate anyway. So, yeah, this is one of the best running levels. And Banjo Kazooie, the first one, is pretty good in terms of performance. Like, it, it sometimes isn't perfect, it'll still have its uh, frame rate hiccups and what have you. But compared to the second game, it's not that bad. Because for those of you who don't know, the second game, banjo Tui, you feel like the N64 is trying to kill itself when playing that game, because the game's literally pushing the N64 to its absolute limit. And the fact the game was rushed, so it probably didn't help. They didn't really opt they didn't have the chance to optimize it for the console that well, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, when we get to Banjo Tooie, because I'm going to be tackling the N64 version of that game as well, just like I am doing with this version, you're going to see the frame rate take a nosedive in a lot of parts, so it could be a bit tricksy. What can I say? Anyway, just be sure to check out the entire entirety of all these trees. One of the big things I always do in this world is I always check the outside of the tree first, where all these little alcoves and stuff are. Because, you know, there's always MacGuffins and stuff around them, you know? And then once I'm done with all that, I start to move up to the next tier of collectible areas. You know, I, I move up to... I move, basically, I take on this level in tiers. I go through the bottom, then I go up, up a tier, then I go up another tier, and, uh, you know, I collect everything on my way. At least that's my particular way of doing things. I don't know how everyone else does it. Probably a similar way. Anyway, sorry for the quick jump cut there. I, uh... Did. Basically, I failed this way too many times and it drove me mad, so I figured I'll just come, I'll cut to the correct, you know, to when I succeed. Now, collecting these mumble tokens at this point is completely pointless as well now, because the B power up that we collected was the very final. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, I'm not going back up that route, I'll tell you that much. But the mumble tokens are useless now, because we already have the last power up in the game, so the mumbo tokens are just there. If you want to collect them, you can. Don't know why you'd want to, but you can get them. The biggest thing here now is just sort of collecting all the necessary stuff, like all the caterpillars in the world and all the notes and what have you. I believe we only need 10 caterpillars in order to actually help Eerie the Eagle. I couldn't be wrong, but I think that's all you need. Again, don't quote me on that because I wasn't really paying attention earlier on to when Eerie was talking to us because Eerie did tell us how many we need specifically, but. Yeah, I digress. Anyway, be careful as well as a caterpillar on this beehive, which you can easily miss if you don't want to pop into the beehive. Which is a bit stupid because I do recommend popping in here because obviously there's notes and there's a caterpillar inside as well, so... It is wise to come in here and just look around. It's always good to find the correct ways to go, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you get to know the right ways, you get to look in all the corners, nooks and crannies. Anyway, I don't think you can- I wonder, can you get hit by that zub up there? Like, I assume if you jump into it, you'll get hit, but... I don't know. Actually, now that I think about it, the beehive music's actually quite creepy. It sounds very alien-ish. I think it's because the instruments they use are usually used in these games when aliens are in the area. Like, it's a wee sort of noise to it, you know? It's creepy as hell. Could just be me thinking that, but, uh... No, I'm pretty certain. Uh, it just reminds me of aliens, you know? Like, that one dude from the his History Channel will be having a lovely time with this. Aliens. And he just have his arms out, you know? You know that one picture. Everyone knows the picture. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, the cabin, I think, is pretty much complete right now. I don't know if there's any more collectibles inside that we can pick up. 
Nope, there's no collectibles inside the cabin itself, so we can basically avoid this thing for now on. And there's nothing above the cabin, but there will be items on top of the roof in the ice part, you know, in the snowy bits, which is the, obviously the winter season. So just be, just look around the backs and stuff just in case anyway, because you never know. That's what I always like to do in these games, even if I'm convinced something's not there, I'll, ha I'll still look anyway just in case, because... These games are based around exploration, and if you miss something, it can drive you up the wall, because you have to explore every nook and cranny of the levels. And this only gets worse in the next game, because obviously the game si the level size is bigger. Like, the size of this world in particular is pretty much a good, accurate representation of the size of the levels in the second game. Like, I think the, sec the first level is bigger than this level in the second game, you know, folks, it's insane. But anyway, now with Nabnut here, because he decided to eat all his acorns like a numpty in the last season, what we need to do is we basically need to go across his, this tree top around this similar area that he's at. And we need to collect all of these acorns to feed to him, because otherwise he's going to be screwed when, this, when the winter time comes, you know folks? So let's just go and help this guy out and uh, while we're at it, loot his house. Now, why he can't reach this one acorn that's on his shelf is absolutely beyond me, but that's one of the acorns we're meant to give to him, so screw it. Just grab it while you're here, you know? Honestly, I, I like, I, I kind of like uh, the fact that a lot of this level is a lot of fetch quests and stuff. It's a neat, it's a neat way to make more collecting this stage work, you know? Because otherwise, I can't, I, I can't really think about how they would be able to do No, 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 no! When I do that, there's nothing more frustrating than falling off the edge of the bloody platform. God damn it, it happens all the time. But yeah, I find it interesting that a lot of the a lot of the quests we need to do in this world are really fetch quests because you can't really now that I think about it, you can't really do I'm trying to think. <laughs> My brain is failing me. There's not really many things you can really do in this world when I think about it. I can't think of any particular good puzzles and stuff they can really incorporate after what they've already incorporated, so... I don't know. Anyway, you'll notice there's one acorn floating in the middle of the platform by here. What I recommend doing is going to this side, lining yourself up, and then doing a double jump. Because otherwise, you're probably going to fall off the platform. And doing so is no good because it will hurt. And it, when it hurts, trust me, it will hurt. How do I know? Because he saw me fall off a minute ago, you know, folks? But I believe this is the last of the acorns, so... No, we got one left to collect. Oh yeah, the last one's in here, so just grind on up here. And this is a new area of the level that we haven't had for access to until this point. So, let's just go in here and there should be an acorn... Underwater? Hey, I'm correct, I'm correct. It's like I played this before, or something, you know? Ignoring the fact all this footage is pre-recorded, so... But that's beside the point. You know, it's kind of a neat little area. I think this is the only time in the game you actually need to go into this room, though. Don't quote me on that, because I always forget. Yeah, actually, another thing about it, I think that's the only time you need to go in that room. So... Huh. <laughs> it exists, I suppose. But anyway, with the last of the acorns given to Nabnut, we have access to the seventh Jiggy of the level, which is fantastic. Like, the Jiggy saw speed up for a short while in the stage, but... I think I was wrong when I said in the last part, like, the Jiggies will start to ramp up in speed of collecting as we get on, because in this particular season, they seem to have slowed down, or is that just me? It's probably just me, I, I don't know. Uh, but I digress. Just by climbing up the tree normally, you'll actually have access to the Switch as well that opens up the next season. And I do kind of like how the Switches for each of the season you'll find if you naturally explore, you know, they're not really tucked away. They're just in very easy to find places, which makes me happy. But it's time to feed Eerie the Eagle with all these caterpillars so he can grow into a gigantic eagle. And this basically unlocks the jig one, another Jiggy for the next season as well, because when we go to the next season, obviously he's going to be transformed. He's going to be, del he's going to be a massive beast, a massive vulture of the skies. He's going to be a bird of freedom, if you will. Because Americans have this thing with eagles. I, I don't understand it personally myself, but they have it. Anyway, just uh, jump on up here and be careful not to fall off this nest. Because what I find is 
because of how mo you know how blurry the sides of the nest looks, the textures, I tend to tend to fall off because I keep I keep thinking the hitbox is a little bit larger than the nest itself. So you can you can you can probably have a bit of issues with that if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, I digress. Also, I don't understand. There was a caterpillar behind Eerie there. Couldn't he turn around and eat the caterpillar himself? Does, why do you need to wait for us to feed him manually? I don't know. Anyway, we can continuously collect more caterpillars from this point onwards, but there is no reason to, ladies and gentlemen, because the caterpillars, they do nothing. They are pointless. They do nothing. And I think we're practically done now with this, with the autumn time. I think there's not much more we can do. S we do need to still collect that one jiggy that's on our flower. However, I completely forgot about it when I was recording this, so don't worry, we'll pick it up later on. I just need to do some editing to get to it, you know, folks. So don't worry your pretty little heads about it. I will be picking up that jiggy. It'll be the last jiggy I get up in the stage, basically, so. Yeah, there's that, there's that. But uh, from this point, in the next season of this world, I have to talk about is things become a hell of a lot less linear. Like, in this stage right now, things are really linear and you it's very easy to simply go on a straight path and collect everything, right? In the next stage, it's very diff- lots of items are tucked away, it's very tricky to find everything, so... It's going to be a lot of wandering about, I'm going to pre-warn you, because, you know, again, it's- it, I don't know. It's like they saved all the notes and stuff in this for this area as well, which makes it kind of frustrating to get through. But of course, you might remember the snowman mooks from previously in the stage. Well, they still exist. We still have to deal with the snowman mooks. So uh, there's one of them there on the top of the hill. And you might be wondering, how do you take care of a snowman mook? Well, outside Mumbo's hut now, instead of the shock pad or instead of Wellington's, we have access to a flight pad. So now we can fly freely. There's also a flight pad on top of this here formation, but I've never been able to jump. I don't even think you can jump up to that normal formation there and without flying, so... Yeah, I don't know. But as you can tell, the floor by you is ice store, but with the exception of this one area. So now it's time to jump on inside the iced area. There we go. Yes, that's right. Swim under there. Icy water takes double air. <laughs> I don't think I really brought up Gruntilda's rhyming too much in this playthrough. Honestly, I love the fact Gruntilda rhymes at you and gives you, um, just taunts you in rhyme. I, I think it's a neat character trait, and I really hope that. I don't know, I, I just find it sad that they, re they removed this trait in Banjo Tooie, you know? But anyway, coming up here during wintertime will give us the first of the empty honeycomb pieces of the world. The second one is also in this season as well, folks, so I haven't missed it. Do not fret. We will be picking up the second and last honeycomb piece of the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, the next honeycomb piece is the final one in the entire game. As you would probably expect, this is the final world after all. But yeah, just, uh, just be sure to speed out of this icy water as quick as you can, because it does take twice the air, you know, you'll you'll lose all of your air twice as fast, so... It gives you just enough time to go into Naughty's house and back, you know, folks? So just be careful, what can I say? But yeah, for the most part, like I said, this this area of the stage is really non-linear. You've got loads of these snowman mooks that we can we have to... We'll obviously need to dispatch. We're going to take them out pretty much now, I think. That's why I'm taking them out. But it's, it's really non-linear. You have to just explore and hopefully you'll find where everything is. And I don't understand why they still giving us mumbo tokens in this point. If you go into this point, they probably expected you to have the, uh, all the power-ups and stuff already. Me, me, me. Although, I am, like I said, I'm really happy that the mumbo tokens, there's more than you need in the game. Otherwise, it would be very frustrating to collect things. But uh, I digress. Okay, mumbo's gone on vacation. Well, that's just mean. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't advise collecting all of these feathers if you have 50 feathers, obviously, because if you collect all the feathers when you have 50 feathers, then you'll level you. If you need a refill later down the line, it won't be helpful. Because I, when I was playing this, I did have a bit of issues in terms of finding things. Because I keep, I forgot where the last honeycomb piece actually was. And because you lose feathers really quick in this game when you're flying around, 
you know, I, I basically had to go back and forth between places of refill. You're not going to see any of that stuff because I did editing, but trust me, it's it's annoying. It's really annoying when you run out of feathers. I think the second game really solves this issue because in the second game, by default, you have 100 fe red feathers to use to fly. And of course, the flying controls are a little bit... Well, actually, I think they're about the same, really. It's just... I don't know, flying's less... Feather, red feathers are a little bit less of an issue, what can I say? Like, you, in the second game, you, like I said, you get a default of 100, and you can even get an upgrade to get ridiculous amounts more as well, so... I don't know, it's strange. At least I think the default's 100, I could be wrong. I don't know, I, I'm playing through the second game right now, but... Certain things like that, I always forget. It doesn't matter anyway, let's just continuously destroy all these snowman mooks that are around the world. And there's actually one platform as well, like, one of the platforms we went to earlier, here it is right by here. There's a Gruntilda switch on. Very easy to miss, this Gruntilda switch is, so be sure, be sure to go around the middle-ish portion of the tree flying around, otherwise you may miss it, and if you miss it, then good luck getting hold of it. Now, and now that that there is actually the final Jiggy of Gruntilda's lair as well. Unfortunately, we can't quite get that Jiggy without using the B power-up, so we're going to need to backtrack to Spring as well in order to get that. But fortunately, through the power of editing, you guys shouldn't have to worry too much about it. Yes, mm, old bean. <laughs> but I digress. I do kind of like the music in this area as well, this, this particular world. It's very tranquil, isn't it? It's very calming. Which, it, it, it's good to have an area like this when it, it, it's very, it's like a st the calm before the storm sort of idea, you know? Because everything's really calm, everything's calm, you know, tranquil. Re and when you get to the final boss, everything's going to be bombastic and what have you. I don't know, I think it's neat. I always like the idea of having calm before the storm, you know, having calm areas and calm levels just before the final air, final battle of the games. Granted, the final battle won't actually be in the next part. We got a bit more of the game to go in the next part. Even though we do finish off this world in this part, there is one last challenge that we need to overcome, which is actually one of the biggest traits of the Banjo Kazooie franchise and one of my favorite traits in this franchise. I love it. I really do love what's coming in the next part. And I'm going to spoil it for all of you who do not want to know and for all of you who are playing along this playthrough with me because. I know a couple of people like to watch Let's Plays and play along with the guy doing the LP, you know. Oh, that, that didn't hurt much. <laughs> I only got a mild concussion. I've only got a mild concussion. I've only got a mild concussion. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do get a little bit lost and forget where the last honeycomb piece is. And to answer the question if anyone's wondering, that last honeycomb piece is above Navnut's house. I know where it is off by heart now, but when I did the playthrough, I just, I think I had a, my, I had a brain fart. See, falling off the giant tree and earlier on, it, it kind of ruined things for me, so I kind of was like, what was going on, man? I was disoriented, what can I say? Anyway, be careful as well when you're walking on all these tree branches, because this game does have ice physics. I don't think I brought this up back in Freeze Easy Peak. But whenever you're in snowy areas, you will slip and slide across the, the area, so... It's it's both safer and more dangerous to use Kazooie, because when you use Kazooie's Talon Trot thingy, uh, you'll have more traction. But it's also more dangerous because Kazooie's Talon Trot well, it's a bit harder to control than normal banjos running, just because of the sheer speed that she runs at, so... You know, it's both a good thing to use her... Whoa, Jesus Christ, camera! Whoa! Whoa, now. It's both a good and a bad idea to use Kazooie's Talon Trot, you know? And what I'm... What I try to do there, I don't recommend doing. <laughs> no, most people, it's probably best to just jump off, but... Me, I had to be a... I had to be a daredevil! Speaking of which, Daredevil, good show, good TV show. I advise people to watch it. <laughs> like I was watching it on Netflix not long before I started this LP, and uh, it's a pretty good show. I'm enjoying it. It's the first season just finished, so yeah, check it out. Anyway, you might notice that now this cabin on top of the tree, this tree house, if you will, is now closed off. But there are still collectibles we need to collect on top of this thing. So just jump on the top of the roof, and. 
it's kind of tri- I don't like when you have to jump onto the top of these roofs and get Kazooie out. Because what I find is I either activate the town trot way too quick or I push the Z button too soon. Which will cause me to do a ground pound. And when I land then, because I don't have the traction I need, I'm going to slip right off and die. So it's kind of annoying. When- You mean- No! No! <laughs> I do, I do have issues with that particular area, you know, I always have issues jump, jumping on those type of houses because I, I just get too paranoid and I'm going to fall and die. But you might notice as well, all the bird enemies in this level are gone. They're gone! Makes sense. Birds go for hibernation in the winter, you know, they go north or whatever, south or east or west. I don't, I don't know biology, I don't know what direction the birds go during winter, but they go somewhere. <laughs> They go somewhere. The planet must need them or something, I don't know. <laughs> this music's so nice, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I cannot stress enough how good the soundtrack is. It just sounds so good. I know Kazooie's ah, 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 noise is sort of hovering over it right now, but seriously. Anyway, I do recommend popping in here if you want to get hold of extra feathers, which I do. I thought I cut this out. Hmm. Apparently I didn't. <laughs> Apparently I didn't. I edited something out. I'm just not sure what, because I, I, it doesn't matter anyway, it's beside the point. It's time to leave this area. And do more stuff. Anyway, if you heard but there, there was a whistling noise, that's because on top of Mumbo's hut there is actually a Jinjo. It's a very easy Jinjo to miss if you're not listening out. And that's kind of why I like the fact that the Jinjos make a sort of... I can't whistle properly. They make a whistle and then they make a sort of um, help noise. I love that. It's, it makes it so much easier to find these guys. I think more items in Banjo 2 as well do that. Like, there's these items in Banjo 2 called Globos, and they're basically the replacement for the Mumbo Tokens in this game, because the Mumbo Tokens, obviously, you don't need them anymore after this game. Because after this game, the, the developers basically thought, okay, having this many collectibles is probably a bad idea. So the Mumbo Tokens would solve the bug with the Globos, which replace like 20 or 30 of these things with one thing instead. You need to collect each level. <gasps> so, yeah, that's that. I said I said way too much in a single breath of air then for my own good. That's probably not good for me. Uh, but I digress. Time to get revenge on you. There it goes. Knock me off of my platform. You ruin my stride of commentary, will you? Oh, oh! I shake my fist at you, good sir. I'm gonna be a cold-hearted son of a. Ah, <laughs> uh, but anyway, we can actually access Naughty's house right now, despite the fact his door is locked. We can actually break and enter inside his house by breaking open his window. And why would we want to do that? Well, I don't think there's anything really major to collect right now in the N64 version. But there's a reason why we're going to need to do it in the Xbox version at the very least, which I'm, again, I'm going to show off, you know, folks. But I digress. It's time to head on outside, shall we? <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of uh, just wandering around with this particular area, folks. You know, it, when you get, even when you know the game back and back and through, like I do, it, if you play like me, you still don't play this level too terribly often. Like this is my least played level in the entire game. I don't really come back to the stage to play it too much. So, I do find myself, you know, wandering about and... Why the triumphant music? <laughs> uh, but I do find myself sort of wandering about, you know, I, I always have issues. Hey! hey! He, Nabnut has a little female buddy. Looks like they might have been having coitus or something of that effect before we came in. Uh, good for you, pal. Good for you. I love when people have young love and whatnot. But yeah, if you're wondering about the triumphant music, again, that's going to be solved when we get, um, get to the Xbox with him again. So for now, we can just simply assume that the triumphant music is all because Nabnut 
had sex and he's happy. <laughs> I just had sex. Dun 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 dun. Yes. <laughs> you see, I got I got sound file on my actual mobile phone just for that reason. You know, folks. <laughs> True story. But anyway, because we fed Eerie all those time, he's gonna shit out this jiggy for us to collect. So yay! Ew, there's there's white stuff all over it. Ew, ew. Then that, that isn't what snow, ladies and gentlemen. Because you know bird feces tend to be white for whatever reason. I never understood why. I don't understand bird biology, but it's pretty peculiar if you ask me. Oh, thank God for that the hundredth note. Like, one of the things I find worst about the stage is I always die when climbing this tree. I always have a tendency to die. So when I get a hundred notes it's in the stage, it's like getting a huge, a huge weight lifted off my back. It just feels so happy, you know, folks. But like I said previously, there's nothing really in this air, this particular room that you can get. So after you got enter this room the first time, that's it. Nothing more you can get in there, which makes me happy. But anyway, quick jump cut ahead and see this building by here. This here is where we're going to get the last honeycomb piece of the game. So, uh, yeah, just make use of the flight pad, which is actually quite right across so right across from Nabnut's house. So it's very handy. And we'll be able to gain access to there, and uh, Bob will be your uncle. What can I say? <laughs> I love the sound effects the mooks make. I don't know. I've always... Like, every time I played this game, I've always thought that's... It's like the perfect sort of villainous laugh. I mean, listen to that. It's so... I don't know. It's such an upbeat enemy. I gotta kill that banjo. <laughs> Uh, but I digress. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the last honeycomb piece. And with that, our health is now maximized. We, our health cannot get any bigger whatsoever. Or can it? Well, our health can get a little bit bigger, but that's something for a bit later or down the line, just before the final battle, actually. So I'm, I'm going to save that. But back in autumn, time to get the last jiggy that we missed out on. Thank God for that. We are now finally done with Click Clock Wood. Woo! Round of applause, everyone. Where's my applause? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am the greatest. Yes, look at that stats. Yes, yes. <laughs> and as you can check, we have completed every single world of the game up until this point, ladies and gentlemen. It's all done. It's all dusted. This game is almost done. All we got left is one more jiggy. Gruntilda's left, and we can basically head directly to the final area, the final boss battle. Where we can take on good old Gruntilda the Witch and finish her off once and for all, son. Yeah! <laughs> uh, but first things first, we do need to go back to Mumbo and transform into our B form. And uh, transform back, you know. Also, one quick speed running tip as well. If you're under the water, you swim faster underwater if you're holding down B than if you're on the surface of the, of the water itself. So... It's a little something that you can probably make note of if you need, if you know, if need be. If you want to be faster, swim under the water. At least I think so. At least it feels faster, you know, folks. I don't know. Yeah, but I digress. Anyway, I, I cut back to B form just to, you know, so you guys don't have to worry too much about me. I cut ahead. And one thing that kind of bugs me is, uh, you know, normally whenever you get all of the jiggies in an area, Banjo does that sort of guh -huh, guh -huh, noise. Whenever you're in a transform state, the transform states don't actually have an animation for that. So they don't really bow down or anything, which makes me getting this last jiggy now kind of saddening. Because you think the last jiggy should have like a bow down and an applause and a great fanfare. But no, you just sort of collect it and the triumphant tune goes and you can just be on your merry way. There it is, there's Zippy Beach. So, yeah, just fly upwards as soon as you leave the level, and there we go. We are done. That is every Jiggy in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Banjo-Kazooie is now effectively 100% done. We have gotten every collectible needed for 100%. So, what does that leave us? Well, that leaves us with the final battle and final area, ladies and gentlemen, which is literally just down here. So, uh... Yeah, you might have noticed there's one note jaw left to go. So we got- oh, Jesus, I almost got clipped by that bloody bird, so go through here. And as you can tell, you only need 795 
of the notes in the game in order to access this, you know? You don't need every note in the game. I'd like to pick them all up, but you don't need them all. They just help you out in the long run. So with that, magic's running out, ladies and gentlemen. So with that, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. And when we return next time, I'll catch you all as we take on the final battle. Don't be sheepish, people. I'll see you all then. Bye!